We're serving a mighty God this morning. Yes, he is. You know, sometimes God has got a lot of benefits for his people, but we fail to take his benefits. Amen. And you know what? A lot of the God's got a lot for his people. And you know what? God's got a lot for each and every one, but you've got to want yeah. what God has for you. You know, no matter what you go through this morning, you know, just like he said earlier, God's right there. You know, I don't care what it may be today. You know, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you all, even to the end of the world. That's a promise that God has given us. But you know what? A lot of people today are being taught that when you come to God, it's going to be a flowery bed of bees, that you're not going to go through no trials. You're not going to face no troubles. It's just going to be just a breeze straight through. But you know what? It's not going to be like that. You're going to face trials. You're going to go through troubles. But you know what? One thing about it, God's always going to be there. I don't care what you're going through this morning. You know, God's bigger than anything that you're going through. You might be going through sickness. You might be going through pain. But you know what? In this whole life, we're going to suffer. And then you know what? A lot of times we go through things and people just throw their hands up and they give up. But where are you going to run to this morning if you're running from God? Because you're running from the only one that can give you help. But you know what? Our trust tonight, he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower that we can run to and be saved. That's the God that you and I are serving this morning. Anything that you're going through tonight, you run to God and God will give you the answer. Amen. You know what? A lot of times people say, well, all you people down there, I see people suffer down there. I see people go through a lot of things. But you know what? We're all going to face that. We don't know what we're going to go through before we leave this old life. Amen. And you know what? Just like Job said, he said, Job, a man said, born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. You know what? He said, in this flesh, he's going to suffer pain. You know what? There's people today trying to tell you that when you come to God, like I say, that you're not going to face nothing, that you're going to go through on a flowery bed of roses. But you know what? Your trouble has just begun when you face God. When you come to God, your trouble has just begun. You know why? Because you're going to suffer persecution. And you know what? I always suffer from persecution, but when you was out in that old world, that old devil had you. But when you come to God, then he's, he's fighting to try to get you back. But you're the one that makes the choices today in your life. You know what? And God begins to show people things. We can't make people do anything. I wouldn't want to make some people do anything. Because if you did, it wouldn't be coming from their heart. They've got to want something in order to get it. You've got to want it. And you know what? If you want something bad enough, then you'll seek God for the answer this morning. You know what? I don't know what you're going through this morning. You don't know what I'm going through. Maybe you're facing financial troubles. But God's bigger than any financial troubles. You may be suffering pain in your body. But God's stronger than any pain that he can make that pain go away. But you know what? I'll say one thing this morning. A lot of times you'll feel sick and afflicted. And sometimes I've been to a place where I couldn't even say anything. Couldn't even pray because I felt so bad and that I was damned. But you know what? I knew God was always there. I didn't have to go looking for it because I know he said that he would never leave me and I stood upon the promises of God. That's what we need to learn to do. We need to stand on the promises of God. And when God says something that he'll do something, I believe this morning that he'll see us through no matter what we go through. But I want you to realize this morning you're going to go through troubles. You're going to go through trials. You're going to have heartaches in this old life. But I'm going to tell you what this morning, God is bigger. God is still there and God is still standing. We're serving the God this morning that's never lost a battle nor never will. And why would anybody want to leave a God like that? Amen. To go back out into the world and begin to try, find, try to find something that would soothe this old flesh. You know what? This old flesh is going to go back to the dust. Naked we come into this world, naked we're going to go out. Amen. You're not going to take nothing with you. You might have all the riches in the world. But you know what? When they put you in that grave, you're just the same as that poor man. We're all going to go back to the dust that we come from this morning. Amen. But you know what? While I'm on this side of the grave, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to lift him up because I know when you go to the grave, you're not going to be able to praise God. But you know what? That's the reason that we need to be a praise of God while we're upon this side of the grave. Can you raise your hands this morning and say, Lord, I praise you this morning, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Lord. I, I thank you for your many promises, oh God. Help us, oh God, to have faith and to believe in you, Lord. I believe, oh God, but help me, Lord, with my unbelief this morning. Help me, oh God, and see me through, because I can't make 
take it to this old world without you this morning, Lord. Touch each and every soul here this morning, oh God. And let this go out and touch that soul that don't know you. Lord, it's in that same right way, oh God. Open up their eyes this morning, Lord, that only you can do this morning, oh God. So we praise you this morning, Lord, and lift you up. What a mighty God we serve this morning. Amen. What a mighty God. I never want to give up on God. He never gave up on me. Everything that I ever went through in life, I knew God was right there because God had something in store for me. It would have been easy for me to just throw up my hands and went around, did all everything this old flesh wanted to do. But you know what? On those days, I come to the crossroads in my life that I had to make a choice. Yes. And I'm glad this morning that it was the best choice that I ever made when I made that choice to serve God. I, when God began to knock upon my heart and I had to answer that call, it was yes. either to go with God or go back out into that old world. But you know what? What's the world got to offer you today? I, it might have pleasure with this old flesh, I, but the Bible says there's only pleasure in, in sin for a season. Yes. Uh -huh. After Amen. that season, it's going to run out. Yeah. Then where are you going to be? Yeah. He thought you was having all kinds of fun. And I'm not going to tell people that they're not having no fun out there. I'm not going to tell them that. Exactly. But I'll tell you one thing. There's going to come a day in your life yeah. that when God begins to knock upon your heart, then you're going to have to make the most important decision you ever made in your life. Yeah. You're going to have to say, Lord, I'm tired of all this running. Yeah. I've been running from you for years. Now, Lord, I'm ready to come home. But you know what? You can't come unless God knocks upon your heart. Yeah. That God knocking has got to be upon your heart. When you see your need to turn to God, and you know what? I know you've heard me say this a lot of times. Back up in the hollow, we used to have theater seats. I, everybody know what I'm talking about. They had the arms on the seat. And I remember the first time that I ever got a call from God. You know, I was probably 16, 17 years old. And I sat in that theater seat and I began to feel the presence of God. And this was in Sunday school. And I know a lot of people don't believe in Sunday school, but I can't help what people believe. I know where I got my first calling at. And it was right in Sunday school. And you know what? I was just a young man. And my brother-in-law at that time was sitting beside me. And you know what? I don't know if he felt anything, but I know what I felt. I, I know that God was knocking upon my heart. That God was the devil for me to come home. Uh, and you know what? I never felt a presence like that in my life. Uh, and when the power of God comes down upon you and he begins to throw that drawing power upon you and you begin to feel that power pulling you up, brother, you got to make that step. Uh, but when you make that first step, uh, the rest of them will be easier. But you got to make the first step and you got to come to God with all your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. But you know what? I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I didn't want to see people. I didn't want to come out in front of everybody. I grabbed the arms of those theater seats until the veins raised up on my arm. But if everybody, anybody ever been in the ocean and you felt a tide come in and you was in a rip tide, and you know what, I was there one time too, and I felt like something would just had a hold of my leg and was a pulling me out. Well, this is the way God's growing power was, but it was stronger than that. You know what? When God began to knock upon my heart and I felt the calling from God, you know, I felt that big urge to come forth, you know. But you know what? I fought and you know, and I grabbed the arms of that seat because I hadn't made up my mind. And you know, and I had no promises tomorrow. If I died that night, I knew I was on my way to hell. Yes. But you got people today telling people, just come to church and you'll be all right. Don't make no difference what you believe. Don't make no difference where you go to church at. It does make a difference what you believe. Yes. You've got to believe the truth. And you know what? There's only one truth. There's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, who's Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. But you know what? When God begins to call you, then you've got a choice that you've got to make in your life. And you know what? I tell everybody this morning. It'll be the most important decision you ever made in your uh -huh. life. Yes. It'll be the best decision you ever made in your life. Yes. Because you know what? When you leave here this morning, you're not promised another hour. That's right. You can go out in your car. You can fall over. Yes. I don't know when my days are coming. 
I know it's right there. Yes. I know I'm going to face it one day. Yes. But you know what? I say, Lord, let me be ready. Mm -hmm. Lord, don't let me go out of here unprepared. That's right. Lord, help me be ready to go because I don't want to go to that place called hell. I want to do the best that I can in this old flesh. And you know what? It might not please a lot of people, but you know what? I can't please people. i got to please God. When God begins to call and God begins to tell me what i got to say, then I can't fear what people's going to say about it. I've got to stand on the Word of God. I, I'm yeah. just telling people today that there's a way that you've got to believe. you got to believe as the Scripture has said. That's the way that you've got to believe this morning. I, I don't care what you call yourself, I, what the denomination you are, you need to ask yourself this question. Did Jesus do it like this? Was Jesus in this faith? Did Jesus teach this? Do I believe it like the scripture has said? Or do I believe it the way my denomination says? You know what? When you come to God, throw everything that you thought you believed, throw it out of the way. Get it out of the way. And come with a new heart and a new mind. And you know what? When God begins to open up your mind and begins to teach you, then you've got to make the decisions what you're going to do. Whether you're going to obey His Word or whether you're going to push it aside. You know what? There's a lot of people that's come to this church and no longer come. A lot of people have heard things that they thought was strong and they couldn't handle. So they went down somewhere on another corner. But I want you to look at this this morning. That old devil, he's got churches almost on every corner. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I know people don't like this this morning, but you know what? It's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord's going to enter in. Right. It's not everyone that says, I'm a Christian, is going to make it. On, it's only the ones that does the will of God. Amen. Those are the ones that's going to make it. Those that's got their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Have you got your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Have you repented of all your sins? Have you did everything that God has told you to do? Or are you just doing it the way somebody else wants you to do it? Ask yourself that, that question this morning. Am I doing it the way God said to do it? Am I a Baptist because my mom and my dad was a Baptist? And I'm not knocking no other religion this morning. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. Yes. You know what? When the Lord says there's only one faith, and the last time I heard there's over 2,400 different, different denominations. Which one's right? Which one's right? This right here is right. Yes. Yeah. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said to be holy. <coughs> for I am holy. Yeah. And you know what? It's a way of holiness. But people don't want that way. People today want to say, I can do it any way that I want to do it. I can live any way that I want to live. And you're right, you've got that choice. But you know what? One day you're going to die. Right. And then the judgment. Yes. It might be all right to live by, but ask yourself the question this morning, is it going to be all right to die by? That's, right. That's the question that you've got to ask yourself this morning. And I want you to look around in the world today, you know, the, one, the, the church represents a woman. And there's all kinds of women sitting on those corners. And she's trying to get you to come in. She flatters you with how she looks. All these games and everything she's got, boy, you'll have a good time. But are they offering you the Word of God? Are they offering you the most important thing this morning? That's this right here. Are they offering you the true Word of God? You know, the Bible says that their God is a spirit, and the only way that we can worship Him is in spirit and how? And truth. Now, do you think the Bible is wrong? Do you think God's Word is wrong? Then somebody has to be wrong, don't they? Everybody in the world says they're right. And you know what? That's the biggest question that people have trouble with this morning. Well, how do I know that I'm right? Well, search the Scriptures. Pray about it that God will open up your understanding. You know what? Well, each and every one of us had to have our understanding opened up. How did you get understanding? Well, first you come to God, and you begin to hear the teaching and the preaching. Then you made the choice what you was going to do with it. You made that choice if I was going to be obedient to it or if I was just going to cast it aside. How many people this morning have been deceived 
by thinking that they're right when they know deep down in their heart that they're wrong. The hardest thing for somebody to do is to admit that they're wrong. How many have ever had that trouble? I have. You ever had the trouble admitting that you was wrong? Yes, sir. Boy, somebody tells you that you're wrong, and it seems like the old fleshly man want to flare up. Well, he can't tell me that. And I'm talking about people in the faith. It's very easy to get in if you're not careful. Somebody come and get on you because of what you believe. Have you ever had that happen to you? Because of what you believe? And they begin to tell you things and begin to smart off and act like you don't know nothing. But sometimes you just need to keep this old thing up. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just be silent. But you know what? That's hard to do, isn't it? And so fleshly man, it don't want to do that. It wants to rear up and it wants to say, well, I'll tell them. You know, sometimes you can get in trouble with God because once you let this thing flap and then words go out, they're hard to bring back. And you know what? They'll cut people. It'll hurt people. That's the reason that we need to be quiet a lot of times and wait upon God. When God begins to move, then God's going to move upon both ends. But you know what? It wouldn't do me a bit of good to go out here and stand on a, pre on a street corner like a lot of people do and begin to preach the Word of God if God didn't tell me. That's right. I said if God didn't tell me. That's right. Because you know what? I'll be making a mockery of things. I might hurt somebody. Yep. But you know what? If God opens up the door and I said if God would tell me, then I better hit that street corner and I better be preaching the Word of God. But if God didn't tell me, then you all will get your head skinned. Right. Then you'll always face a lot of persecution, and you will. But you know what? If, like I said this morning, don't get me wrong. If God would tell me to do it, I would surely do it. I wouldn't let my old, I wouldn't let my old flesh take me away. But let's get into this lesson this morning. God will see us through. How many believe that this morning? Amen. No matter what you go through, God is going to see his people through. <laughs> Daniel 12, Daniel 12, in verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of what? Trouble. Time of trouble. Now people today are preaching that the church is not going to face no trouble. The church is going to be raptured out. You're not going to face none of this. You come and give your life to God, it's going to be a flowery bed of ease. But you know what? Did the apostles go through trials? Yes. Did they go through troubles? Yes. Did Jesus go through trials? Oh, yes. Did he go through troubles? Did he face persecution? Uh -huh. Do you think you're going to face persecution? Yes. Sure. He said you'd be persecuted for my name's sake. You know what? A lot of people have never taken upon the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of people say I know him, but they don't really know him. You know what? I know that there's a president, Biden. I know that he's a president, but I personally don't know him. Amen? Amen. That's the way Jesus is this morning. A lot of people say I know Jesus, but personally, they don't know him. They've never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. They say they do. They say I know Jesus. But he said, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do these words that I tell you? He speaks the word of God. He lets it go out. And then we make the choice what we're going to do with it. And people today, they want to make the wrong choices because this old flesh. This old flesh does not want anything that God has for it. I want you to listen to me this morning. This old flesh is going to fight you every step of the way. Amen. You know what? I think a lot of people are guilty this morning standing behind this desk. Not this desk here, but I'm talking about the pulpit. Yes. Standing behind the pulpit, telling people that they can live an unholy life, come to church on Sunday, and you'll be all right. What kind of a life would that be? That would be like a double-minded man. He's unstable in all his ways. 
And you know what? And not, a double-minded man is not going to make it. If I tell you one thing, if I'm preaching to you something, then I better live it myself. That's right. Amen? Yeah. If I don't live it myself, I have no right telling you. That's right. I have no right telling you. But if I tell you from the Word of God, then it's the Word of God telling you I'm just His mouthpiece. I'm just speaking to you this morning what the Word of God says. And I'm telling you this morning, every one of us, I know I do, I need to draw closer to God. Every day I need a closer walk. I don't say, Lord, I've got all that I need. A lot of people think they're going to get too much at church. Did you ever hear people say, eh, my will answer, we went three times this week. Why would I have to go again? Some people can't even come one time a week. I speak that to their shame. Sometimes we're sick and afflicted and we can't come. Maybe we have to work and we can't come. But just to say, I'm not coming that night because I don't like the man that's going to preach. I don't like the man that's going to teach. This man here, he's too loud. The other man's too soft. I don't like to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I'll say this tonight. If I'm standing up here and I'm sitting right here and I'm not, I'm not preaching or teaching, if you're standing up and I don't listen to you, there's something wrong with me. That's right. Amen. Amen. If I'm up here teaching or preaching and you don't want to hear me, then you need to show God some respect. Yeah, you're not believing on me. You're mocking God. When you walk out on the preacher, you're walking out on God. Yes, and I'll say one thing this morning. If I sit here and I listen to everybody testify and I hear everybody sing, it's the only thing that you can do is reverence and respect what I've got to say. Amen. That's not asking for too much, is it? But you know what? I'm not going to get up because so-and-so is testifying. I don't like what they say. But you know what? I'm going to sit there and listen. I say, Lord, help us. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to draw closer to you. Amen. You know what? We should be one family. Yes, sometimes there'll be things that comes up. Maybe you might have a quarrel with somebody. But you know what? You need to work it out. You need to work it out. And you know what? A lot of times we need to show kindness and love to one another. Amen. More than what we do. Right. Amen? Amen. Some people go to church and they don't even know the person sitting right next to them or in front of them or behind them. Don't even know. Something's wrong. When we can't have enough love for somebody to get to know somebody, I want to help you. I want to do everything in my power to reach out to help you. I want to be just like the apostles. I want to be an example to you. I want my life. I want you to see my life, what I do. And you know what? You might see my faults. Maybe I can't see them. Maybe you, you can see my faults. Yes. But I say, Lord, you show me my faults and my failures. Because I know that you're better than stronger than us, this old fleshly man. But Lord, when you show it to me, Lord, help me be obedient. Yes. Help me, Lord, not to run from you. Where can you run? Where are you going to run to if you leave God? When God begins to knock upon your heart, then where are you going to run? Did you have a fun and everything out there in the world? You know what I'll say this morning? It's time that people make a choice. You either come with God or you're not with God. It's that simple. And it's that hard if you want to make it hard. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. We make it hard because we don't want to be obedient to God. Amen. We say we want to be a Christian, but, Lord, there's nothing wrong with me drinking a glass of wine once in a while with my dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what's wrong with it? God said not to do it. Right. People today say, there's nothing wrong with drinking one bottle of beer. It's not going to get me drunk. I'm like what Brother Bill used to say. Well, if you drink one bottle of beer... You're a quarter way drunk. Amen? Uh -huh. And yet people will still do it because they've been taught these things. 
A lot of people will sit down with the meal and say, there's nothing wrong with drinking a glass of wine with my meal. Everybody else does it. I go to church with people that does it. So why can't I do it? I'll tell you why you can't do it. Because God said not to touch it. God said not to do it. God's got ways for His people. But you know what? People behind this desk today has made it so easy. Made it so easy that they don't want to preach what thus saith the Lord. They want to give people fables. They don't want to tell them what they have, how they must live. I'll say that. How they must live. That they got to live a clean, holy life. Amen. I can't preach on modesty. I can't preach on holiness. Might hurt somebody's feelings. Shame on me if I can't. Shame on me if I can't. You know why there's no fear in the land today? Because it starts right here. Right behind the pulpit. People today have made it so easy that they don't let people have no fear of God. Amen. They go about living however they want to live, do whatever they want to do, and say, no, I'm a child of the king. No, you're not. Who's your pappy this morning? Who's your father? It's either God or the devil. You make the choice which way you want to go. I remember years ago, people preached the holiness right down the line. Amen. What's happened today? What's happened to it today? Is it still real? Yeah, it's real. Is it still real? Yes. Amen. God never changes. He said, I'm God and I change not. His word never changes. It's right in the word of God. But people today say, I don't have to dress like this. <clears throat> I can curse a little bit. God understands. You ever fly off the handle, so to speak? I flew off the handle and I got angry. I didn't curse. But today, there's people today that will fly off the handle and people that says they're a Christian and they would cuss you up one side and down the other and still say, I've got it. You ain't got it according to the word. Not according to the word. But you know what? That's the reason this morning that we come to church is to learn. Every one of us has got to grow. And how can you grow if you never come and hear the word of God? Do you think that it's possible? Do you think that you could plant a seed in the ground, never water it, never take care of it? Do you think that seed would ever grow? The weeds would overtake it. And that's what's happened to people this morning. The wheat just overtook them. They might have got a good start at one time. But what happened to them? I'll tell you one thing that's happened to people today is they've compromised. Yep. They've compromised. Yeah. They've compromised the Word of God. You look around in a lot of churches today and they say, you people don't offer nothing to the young people. All these other churches around here, they offer things to the young people. I said, well, we offer the most important thing there is. That's the Word of God. Amen. What's more important than the Word of God? It's more important than any basketball game. Right. It's more important than any strobe lights going on in the church. Right. You know what? You see a lot of churches today and them strobe lights going on and all. You think it's a rock concert. And a lot of people say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, you better read and you better study. Do you think God would want you in an environment like that? I know a boy that was a sinner went to a church uptown that had the strobe lights going on. He said, this ain't for me. And he got out of there. And I thought that was probably the best decision he ever made in his life yes. is to get out of a place like that. What I'm going to tell you this morning is don't compromise on the Word of God. Just because the rest of the world are doing these things, it doesn't make it right. If God's word is against it, then I'm against it. If people hate me for preaching and standing on the word of God, then you just have to hate me. Because I'm going to stand on the word of God as long as there's breath in this whole body. Because I know who my maker is. I know who I'm going to stand before when I face God. 
I'm not going to stand before no organization. I'm not going to stand for no big bishop. I'm going to stand before God. You're going to stand before God. And you're going to give an account of everything that you did in this body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You know what? Just like I began to say a while ago, how people think that they're not going to go through no troubles or go through trials. But you know, the Bible says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Every one of us this morning, I don't care how good of a person you are, you're going to have five trials and troubles in this life. There's going to be people that's going to come against you. And even people in your own family. You're talking about a time to death. Listen to what he says. Let me finish this. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the what? That ain't the church book. That's not your denominational book. That's God's book. He's the only one that can put your name there. You've got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You've got to have your sins remitted. And you've got to be obedient to the Word of God. But I want you to look this morning how this world has changed. I never ever thought that I would see the day. And I remember my old pastors People down through my life as a kid, I remember him speaking against homosexuality. Yes. And he began to say, one day, mm -hmm. they said they'll not only be in your churches, mm -hmm. but they'll be teaching your kids in the schools. Yes. Do you think that we're living that day today? Yes. Do you think that we're living that day today? Yes. I love people. I'd love to preached a whole house full of homosexuals. Transgenders. No such thing as a transgender. They, they made themselves like that. God didn't born them like that. The Bible says he made male and female. Now you're one or the other. Whatever your birth certificate states that you are, that's what you are. Like it or not. But you look in the world today you got men wanting to be women, mm -hmm. women wanting to be men, and say there's nothing wrong with it, and you've got to accept it. If two homosexuals come here and want them to be married, two men, two women, I'll guarantee you one thing, there would be nobody that would marry him right here in this church. Mm -hmm. But, don't think persecution ain't going to come. They might threaten you. If you don't marry them, then you'll not have church here no more. Yep. Hey, this is the day that we're living in. Yes. You've got to accept all this evil that's going on around in the world today. You've got to accept it because it's accepted by the world. I don't have to accept it. That's all right. If it's against God's law, I'm going to stand on God's law. Amen. If God's word says it's an abomination, it's an abomination because you know why? Sin never changes. Sometimes it comes in a different form. And the devil will try to deceive people. But you're the ones that makes the choice. You can accept it or you can reject it. Just like in the Olympics here just here while the other day. A woman boxer was a man. Now what's wrong with people today? No common sense at all. No common sense at all. Don't even know right from wrong. Good for me. If they do, they make the wrong choice. I don't want my daughters or my grandkids going to a shower room where there's a transgender, a male, I know I'm not going to stand in there. If I find out that one of my kids was being taught by a homosexual, I'd jerk them out of the school. Amen. 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 I know this is not popular with the world. This is going against everything that the world says. I say they're more than welcome to come, but they've got to sit back in the pews. They're not welcome up on the pulpit. 
People today are making the wrong choices in their life. But you know what? He said, cry aloud and spare not. How many people this morning are crying aloud? And spare not and show Jacob thy sins. People today are afraid to cry out against things like this. Afraid to take a stand. But children, every one of us in here one day might have to take a stand. Did you ever have to take a stand on something and know that it was going to cause hard feelings? It was hard to do, but you had to do it, didn't you? I say people are more than welcome to come here. But when you come to God, there's got to be a change made. If you think that you're a male and you're really a female, when you come to God, that's got to change. You make the choice in your life which way you're going to turn. But can't you see today, he said, woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. Can't you see we're living in that time of trouble today? Yes. This world is so evil. Once you see something you think that you, you've seen, that you've seen it all. But then something comes along and takes that right away. And you see something worse. And it keeps, the Bible says seducers are going to wax worse and worse. Even to the end of time. Lord, don't you think that we're living in the last, uh, last day? Where did the last day start at? On the day of Pentecost. The last day started. Now I want you to look how much time has come down from the day of Pentecost. Can't you see today that we're living in the last days? Didn't Noah, but he began to say, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. In other words, they did whatever they wanted to do. But the wrath of God come and fell upon the people. The wrath of God was about to sound. That trump was about to go off. And judgment is about to be pronounced upon people. Amen. Children, I'm telling you what this morning. We're living in a wicked, wicked world. Yes. I believe that when God looks down, he sees a little bit of his people. He sees a light here and a light there. Very few lights left in the world today. Because people have compromised God's word. They don't want to obey by it. They want to think, they want to go with what they think about it rather than what God's word says. But listen to what he says. Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. How many believe that? Are you waiting upon the Lord? You want your strength renewed? Wait upon God. Don't get impatient. Today people get so impatient that they want something for God and they act like this because they pray one time that God's going to give it to them right then. But sometimes you've got to have patience and wait upon the Lord. The Lord's going to try you to see if you're going to keep coming back and asking Him and asking Him. But how many times do we get impatient? We ask God for something, we don't get it, we quit praying for it. Amen. We quit doing what God says to do. But listen. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. You know what? He said we're going to reap if we faint not. We've come too far to faint. We've come too far to lay down. I'll tell you one thing this morning. If you've come one day, you've come too far to look back. Amen. Keep your eyes upon the prize this morning. No matter what you go through, no matter what's facing you in this old world, keep your eyes upon God. He is your answer. He will never leave you. Have patience and wait upon God. This old flesh, it gets impatient. It don't, I've got impatient a lot of times. I could didn't want to wait. Then well, I thought my answer should come right now, right now. Mm -hmm. But it didn't come. But I kept praying. And I keep seeking God. Because I know my answer is going to come from above. Yeah. I know God is going to give me the answer. But I've got to keep coming back. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. 
Don't fear all these things that you're going through. All these troubles and trials that come upon you. Don't fear. Listen to what he said. Fear not. For I have redeemed thee. Yes. I have called thee by thy name. And thou art mine. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that you're one of his? Aren't you glad that you're a child of the king this morning? That you're in God's hands? No matter what you're going through this morning, can't you see today that you're in God's hands? Uh, and if you're in God's hands, you're in the best hands that anybody could ever imagine in this whole world. He is greater than greater. Why would anybody want to turn from the mighty God like that? A God that had the answer for everything. I was thinking this morning, when Moses was chosen to lead the children out of Israel, each of bondage. And you know what? No doubt a lot of people, Mark, they begin to murmur and complain against Moses. Yes. That they brought him out, that he's brought them out, you know, in the wilderness to be destroyed. But you know what? Can you imagine how those people felt? <coughs> I don't know how many there was. There was probably thousands or millions. I don't know. I knew it was a lot of people. But I want you to realize something today. They come down to that Red Sea. Mountain behind them, listen, and here comes Pharaoh. No place to go. No place to go. Ocean right in front of them. And I hear people making mockery and claims that that wasn't the ocean. Yes, yes I'm afraid it was. People, they say, well, it was just a, it was just a creek that was red. And they walked over. No, the Bible said, but I want you to listen. When he told him to take his rod and told him to put it forth, and brother, I'll tell you what, when that rod went forth and the waves began to bow back, right. that ocean began to part. And I'll say one thing, you know what? They couldn't come after him until after they crossed. But you know what? They went across, the Bible said, on dry ground. You know what? But they went all the way across. Here they thought that there was bread let down and it was going to be destroyed by Pharaoh's men. But here they made it on the other side and here come Pharaoh with all his soldiers, all of his chariots marching right behind that was going to destroy him. But you know what? If you're in God's hands, God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. And boy, I'll say one thing this morning. When God let the water go back, it destroyed all of Pharaoh's men and all of his chariots. You know what? I know a lot of people watch this movie, The Ten Commandments, yeah. and it showed the Pharaoh returning back to Egypt. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. The Pharaoh and all of his men were destroyed in that Red Sea. That's right. Every one of them was destroyed. Can't you see if God led them through that Red Sea, don't you think that he's big enough to lead you through your troubles and through your trials? People say, oh, it's easy for you to say. It's easy for you to say you don't have what I've got. I'm dying. Man, this born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Full of trouble. Trouble's going to come. But I'm glad I'm in God's big hands. I'm glad that no matter what I comes upon me, and I might pay for this. I might pay for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. Maybe I'm made up with cancer. I don't know. But I do know that God is greater than any cancer. God is greater than any heart trouble that you might have. God is bigger than any financial trouble that you've got today. God is bigger than anything than this whole world. And if God's big enough to see those people through the Red Sea, He's big enough to lead me through my troubles. Amen. Now listen, that don't mean that I'm not going to, I'm going to die because one day something's going to take me to my grave. One day something's going to take you to grave. You're not going to live forever. When God comes in, you'll live forever. But you're going to be in that grave until God comes. You're going to wait till that trumpet sounds. And when that trumpet sounds, then you're going to come out of that grave. Not before. Not before. I know there's people preaching everybody's in heaven. Everybody's in hell. No. The grave is hell. The grave is hell. But you know what? The final judgment hasn't been pronounced yet. 
He said death and hell was cast in the lake of fire, which burned from fire and brimstone. That is the second death. And you know what? I'll tell you this morning. We've all got a long way to go in a short time to get there. Amen. But Lord, I know that you're bigger than anything that we're facing this morning. We have to make it up in our mind, no matter what we go through. And I know sometimes when you get hit with these things, it's like somebody hitting you with a bucket sometime of cold. And I can't, I can't even fathom what it would be if I went to the doctor and the doctor said, son, you got 20 days or 30 days to live. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't know how that would hit me. It has to affect my mind. Oh, yes. But you know what? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh -huh. I know, I know that if I die tomorrow, I want to die praising the Lord. <laughs> I want to say, Lord, I know you're bigger than anything that I went through. Lord, if I go to my grave, I know that you're bigger than anything this morning. Uh, and I know, Lord, there's nothing that's impossible with you. You parted the Red Sea, you can part the sea in my life. And if God sees it fit that I live another 20 years, then so be it. But if God says it's time to come home, then it's my time to go home. I've seen a lot of good men in this church, a lot of good women in this church come down before right here. And now they're over in the cemetery somewhere and they're asleep. Yes. They're asleep. Right. They're waiting for that trumpet to sound. Nobody's going to get there before anybody else. But I want you to listen to me this morning. One day there's going to be a resurrection day and we're going to come out of that grave. And you know what? The devil, the devil couldn't stop Jesus from coming out of that grave. And when that trump, final trumpet sounds, he's not going to keep you from coming out of that grave. You're going to come out of that grave when that big alarm clock in the sky, it goes off. And time is no more. You're going to come up out of that grave. And you're going to live throughout the cycle ages of eternity. What a promise that God has given us. My Lord, why wouldn't anybody want the promises of God? Why would this is the best insurance policy that you could ever take out is when you come and you give your life to God. Amen. Best insurance policy that you could ever have Amen. is to have your hands, the Lord to have his hands upon you. Yeah, we're going to suffer things in this little flesh, but you know what? He said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. You can't, we can't forget the promises of Almighty God. Sometimes when you get hit, sometimes with maybe something, maybe in your body, and sometimes it's hard to take. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take. It is. Yes. I'm not going to sit up here and say, I know what I would do, because I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, well, if it was me, I'd go right through it. I wouldn't care. You don't know what you're going to say. Right. You don't know what you're going to do until you go through that problem. Right. Right. Then when you go through that problem and you look back and you say, why did I say that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. Brother Glenn, I don't know what I would do if I went to the doctor and he told me that I had cancer like he. Right. I know it would hit me like a ton of bricks. And it, anybody would hit him like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. But one thing I can say is I'm in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. The doctor might say that I've got five months to live. But he don't know what God's got in store for me. God knows, you know, God knows what he's got in store for you. I don't care what the doctors say. I'm serving the great physician in the sky. The one that's got all power in heaven and earth. The one that's never lost a battle. Who never will. That's the God, children, that we're serving this morning. Don't let the devil get you down and tell you that you can't make it. I, I'm going to tell you this morning, you can make it, but the only way that you can make it is by the help of God. That's the only way any one of us can make it, is by the help of God. Listen, uh, listen to what he said. 41 and 10, Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Can you say that God is with thee? That God is with you? Amen. Listen. Be not dismayed, for I am God, and I will what? 
strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, don't you think that God is going to strengthen his people? Don't you think that God is going to draw us closer to him? Romans 8, 31. When shall we say to these things, if God be for us, then who can be against us? Amen. If God be for you, then who can be against us? Boy, that's a, that's a great saying there, isn't it? If God be for us, then who can be against us? 32. A Romans 8 and 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not, how shall he not with him also freely, freely, freely give us all things? Don't cost you anything but the world. Listen. Well, who shall say anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, even who is even is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Now listen to this. Romans 8, 35. Who? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Ask him a question. Who shall separate us the love of Christ? You know the only one that can separate you from the love of Christ is you yourself. You're the one that makes the choice. He'll keep you as long as you want to be kept. But listen to what he says. Shall tribulation, in other words, shall trouble, separate us from Christ? No. Distress? No. Or persecution? No. Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are more than conquerors this morning if you hold on to the mighty hand of God. Listen, for I am persuaded. Paul begins to write this. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, why don't we hold to those promises? If he said there's nothing, that can separate you from the love of Christ, then why do we begin to beat ourselves up and say, Lord, I can't make it. Lord, I need my answer right now. Have you ever been there before and you thought that you needed your answer right then? But God knows what he had in store for you. God knows when the answer was going to come. Yeah. But did you keep seeking God? Did you keep trusting in God? Did you keep asking God? He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Yeah. Those are promises of God. Yes. But we say, you don't understand. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. You can make it. Yes. You can make it. I don't care what you're going through this morning. I'm going to tell you that God's Word said we're more than conquerors. You can overcome this old world. This old world is not my home. I'm just a pilgrim walking through. I'm glad that this old world is not my home. It's become too evil. Why would anybody with the right mind want to stay in a world that's so evil? I'm glad that I'm going to go to a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness. We're going to live throughout the cycle ages of eternity with our Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Why wouldn't anybody want to make a decision to go to a place called heaven? But children, hell is real tonight. Hell is real just as real as you see me up here this morning. Hell is real. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You make that choice. Which what are you going to seek, search tonight? Which choice are you going to make? Are you going to make the right choice and go with God and be obedient with Him? Or are you going to choose and go to the devil with the devil and do everything that He wants you to do? 
If you're going to do that, you might as well go out in the world, have all the pleasure you want to get, because this will be the only pleasure you will ever have in life. Yeah. When you die and you face judgment, and he cast you into the pits of hell, I'm going to tell you this morning, you're going to burn throughout the cycle of ages of eternity. There's not going to be no getting back. There's not going to be going to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Let me go back and warn this one or that one. There's not going to be no such thing. I'll tell you what, there was a great gulf fix. And you know what? If the people there, they could look up and they could see what they could miss. And you know what? That would be hell enough just to look it up in heaven and see in everything that you missed out on. That you could have had that promise of eternal life. But you choose the things in the world. What are you choosing this morning? Are you choosing God or are you choosing and doing the things that the devil says? You're choosing one way or the other. There's no halfway thing in this. You've got to put your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength into it. You've got to put everything that you have in serving God. Amen. Boy, I remember people would go out to ball games and they'd whoop and they'd holler and they'd carry on. But today, when you come to the church, a lot of churches can't clap your hands. A lot of churches, you can't say, praise the Lord. You don't have that freedom. They want you to sit on your pew. They don't want you to say a word. They just want you to listen to what the man behind this desk says. And then, he wants you to be obedient to what he says, whether he's told you anything or not. And most of them behind the desk this morning are telling people lies. But yet, people today, you look around in the world, we was talking about this earlier. Everything today has come down to mega. People wants to go to a big mega church where there's tens of thousands of people. But the people, the guys behind the desk will never make a stand upon anything. I remember seeing a man on TV that had a big mega church and they was questioning him about what he believed, what about homosexuality, and he was just like a politician. He beat around the bush and never did answer the question. You're either for it or you're against it. And if you're a man of God, you've got to make that choice whether you're for it or whether you're against it. you got to preach against it or you might as well tell people it's all right and that's what they're doing. They'll say, well, you don't understand. This generation is a little bit different. It's a wicked generation that we're living in. It's a wicked generation. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Yes. Untoward needs to be unruly, stubborn. You can't tell people nothing today. You can try to warn them, but you can't help people because people want to continue on the things that they're doing. They think everything's all right. They've been taught that everything's going to be a flowery bed of roses that they're just going to float through. I'd hate to be the preacher that preach preach people these false lies and tell them that you're not going through no troubles. God's going to take you out of here before all the trouble starts. Well, he should have already come after you. Because, children, I've never seen a time like this in all of my life. Amen. Never seen the world so wicked. And you know what? God destroyed that first world because of the wickedness that was in it. Yes. I wonder how much longer he's going to wait. How much longer is he going to wait? I think it's just a few prayers of God's holy people that's keeping it together today. Amen. Because God can step off of that throne at any time. Are you ready this morning? I ask you yourself this question this morning. If you're not ready to meet God, right here is where you've got to meet Him. Amen. Come and give your life to God before it's too late. Because children, He's coming. And He's coming in a day and an hour when you think not. Brother Lee.